In first grade, when I was just shy of six years old, my teacher found a book that someone had written my name in repeatedly with a crayon. It was clearly the writing of a child, my name written in there half a dozen times, from top to bottom on the inside back cover. My teacher absolutely lost it, and red in the face accused me of doing it. But I didn't. The more she accused me, the more I denied it. The more I denied it, the angrier she became. Soon she was screaming in my face, swearing at me, demanding that I confess. But I refused. We were sitting at the kind of desk where the wooden top opens to reveal a storage area underneath for notebooks, pencils, crayons, and so forth. She told me to get my things out of the desk as I was being sent to the principal's office. When I reached inside, she slammed my arms with the wooden desktop. I screamed and started crying, and my teacher asked if I was ready to confess. I refused, so she told me to get my things again. I didn't want to get my arms or hands crushed again, so I refused. She kept demanding that I get my things, and I continued to refuse. She became so angry that she grabbed my arm, lifted the desktop up again, stuck my hand inside it, and slammed it shut once more. She repeated this about a dozen times, asking between each slam if I was ready to confess. I never did and eventually she only stopped when a number of other kids started crying. I told my parents what happened when I got home from school. There was a big stink about it at school the next day, and I had to relive the story every time somebody asked about it. I never saw the teacher again. It really wasn't me who wrote in the book. One weekend, when I was in college, I crashed at a friend's house and woke up early the next morning, at roughly 7 a.m. or so. I decided to walk five minutes back to my dorm to get some more sleep in my own bed. As I got close to my dorm, I noticed a man following me. No one else is out walking. He doesn't look college-aged either. I start walking to the front door. It was after the night security guard, which is to say another paid student, had left, so there was no one at the door. I still had to swipe my ID card to get in, and he was very close behind me. I swipe my card and he sneaks in before the door fully closed and relocked. I bolted up the one flight of stairs to my door and down an 80-foot hallway to my room. As I fumbled with my keys, I saw the man enter the dark walkway, looking left and right to see where I went. I slipped into my room and locked my door. I didn't fall back asleep for the rest of that morning. This is a terrifying but true story I experienced when I was 12 years old. I moved to my dad's when I was 10, and didn't know anyone else in the area, except for the family my dad was friends with, a single mom with three kids. Luckily, there was a girl a couple years older than me, 12 at the time I met her, and we got to know each other a little over a couple years. We weren't really close, but ended up having the same friends. One night, my friend Rob was hanging out with her and her younger brother. They happened to be in the house alone because my friend's mom was at work. Which is where this gets terrifying and sad. Her mother has been helping this one lady through her work and got to know her fairly well. She found out her sister was in a mental institution and was let out recently. The night Rob is hanging out with my friend, they get a knock on the door. My friend thought it was just their mom, and answered it without thinking. Rob wasn't supposed to be there, and he took off through the window to his house down the road. He never thought twice about it, but it wasn't my friend's mom at the door. It was the sister of the lady her mom was helping, and she figured out through talking to her sister 
where her family lived, and my friend's mom's working schedule. She came in, and this is where I don't know the details, and I'm glad that I don't. My friend's younger brother got away to the neighbors to call the police. The lady brutally murdered my friend a week from Christmas, decapitated her, and left her body naked in a bathtub, and hid her head. They had to look through the presents and I don't know where they found it, but they did. I wasn't allowed to go to her funeral. When I was about seven years old, I went on a walk with my babysitter. We were walking back a mile or so to my house, on a fairly busy road, and about halfway there, she says that we should play Simon Says. At first we walk faster, then skip, and then jog lightly. Then she says, Simon says, run as fast as you can. Simon says, turn here. I was slightly confused, but played along. As we turned down the driveway, I looked back and saw two guys chasing after us, one with a bat and the other with a knife. We ran up to a house and some old people living there thankfully let us in. At the time, I didn't grasp how messed up it was that we were being chased, and I still have no clue why we were. My boyfriend's mom is 43 now. The other day, we were talking about inexplicable events, when she started telling me about her best friend in high school. When they were about 17 or 18, and were finishing up their last year in school, a bunch of scholarships abroad had come out. Living in a small island in the South Pacific, scholarships to study abroad were hard to come by. And being a smart girl, Naturally, her best friend applied. A few months later, she received a call saying that she had received a full scholarship, inclusive of allowance and accommodation. She received an official letter, contact details, and her parents even spoke to a lady on the phone who explained the whole process to them. All she had to do was sort out her visa, pay her airfare, and she was ready to go. Someone would meet her at the airport and make sure that she got settled in. It was the opportunity of a lifetime. D-Day arrives, and she's off on her new adventure. The best friend gets on the plane, waves goodbye, and promises to call home as soon as she gets access to a phone. She never called. They tried contacting the lady they'd spoken to over the phone. The number didn't work anymore. The family contacted the university she had received a scholarship to. They had never even heard of this girl. She wasn't enrolled in any classes. There weren't even any scholarships available for her home country. That was the last anyone's heard of her.